How's it going guys? Sam from West Metal Rabbits here and today I'm going to do a, a three-part mini-series on what to feed meat rabbits. The diet of your meat rabbit is probably going to be one of the most important considerations that you're going to have during the course of your project because what you feed them is going to directly affect your, your meat output, the quality of your breeding stock, and the quality of your animals. Uh, that being said, a lot of people get into meat rabbits for self-sufficiency and because they don't necessarily trust the industrial food system, rightfully so in a lot of cases. Um, so a lot of people are interested in feeding non-commercial food to uh, meat rabbits. So we'll get into that in a later video, but this first one is just going to be a general overview of what you can feed a meat rabbit and what a good meat rabbit diet looks like. So right off the bat, you pretty much guarantee to have seen this right here. This is commercially pelleted rabbit feed. Now, commercially pelleted rabbit feed is technically a complete diet. You could feed them only pellets and they should do okay. On a lot of cases, they'll do really well. However, that being said, not all pellets are created equal and I usually don't recommend feeding just pellets for the backyard person. So, um, to briefly get into commercial pellets here, they're going to be the most expensive feed option on the table. They are manufactured usually from various food making byproducts um, and alfalfa. That's the primary ingredients. So they're not really directly competing with humans for food from a commercial pellet, which is a lot of people's concern. It's not like chickens where you're feeding valuable grain that you could be eating. Usually it's, it's uh, fibrous byproducts from processing grain and alfalfa, along with some trace, trace vitamins. Now, the main thing that sets commercial pellets apart from one another is the protein content. So, rabbit pellets typically come in 16% protein, 17%, and 18% protein concentrations. Each one is appropriate for a different type of situation. If you're just having a pet rabbit, or you have a buck who's just hanging out, or pretty much any buck for that matter because their jobs are very easy, or does that are mature and done growing but are not being bred, um, or any other rabbit for that matter, you can feed them 16% because they don't really need that extra protein. However, <clears throat> if you're heavily breeding your does or breeding your does at all, and any rabbits that you're trying to get growing, you know, whether that means they're growing to eight week slaughter age or you're growing them up to be breeding stock, you really want to be feeding them 18% protein. That's going to give them that extra oomph to really build good quality flesh that you won't see with 16%. Besides that, it's going to really depend on where you are in the country. The brands vary greatly. I know Purina is pretty common nationally. Where I am, I use Blue Seal. Um, but again, it's really going to depend on where you are. Basically, the better quality feed you have, the better results you're going to get with your rabbits as far as health, condition, looks, and growth rates. Now, for a lot of people, though, that's not the only concern when they're raising rabbits. They want to be getting a cheap source of meat, and they want to be getting a source of meat that isn't necessarily dependent on a commercial feed which is where some other additives come in. Um, so first, right off the bat, again, very common, we have hay. Hay is basically any dried grass or plant material that's not processed. It's just dried and then fed to the animals. Now, with your meat rabbits, even if you're feeding them pellets, it's good to feed them some hay because that acts as a source of roughage and really helps balance out their gut, which is very, very sensitive. It's got a lot of important bacteria in there that if they get thrown out of whack at all, can very quickly kill a rabbit. Um, so, hay is good regardless, even if you're feeding pellets. You shouldn't feed hay exclusively, but if you're feeding pellets or you're feeding other stuff, which we'll get to in a later video, either way, hay is a cornerstone of any good rabbit diet. Now there's several different types of hay, which I'm going to get into in the next video, but suffice to say right now we have two types on the table. This is orchard grass, which is essentially a type of grass like you would, similar to what you would have in your yard. Um, it's lower in protein, higher in fiber. And generally what I feed to rabbits that I'm giving pellets to because it sort of helps counteract this really energy dense high protein pellet by giving them some roughage and what I would say is the human equivalent of you know fiber good for your diet alfalfa is not technically a grass it's a legume like a pea or a bean and as a result it's very rich in protein and very high in energy now <clears throat> you'll hear a lot of mixed things on the internet about alfalfa but basically, any pellet you have is going to be primarily made of alfalfa. And I'll get into feeding alfalfa in the next video, along with a couple other types of hay. So we'll just leave that off to the side. And the third option you have as far as feeding rabbits is greens and or forage and scraps. So this is basically anything that's not hay or pellets. So that typically, for most people, is going to be backyard, grasses, tree leaves, vegetable trimmings, uh, older vegetables, 
possibly some some forest products depending on what kind of trees you have in your yard um, you know sunflower seeds is a very common food additive whole grain and that again is the subject for another separate video but when feeding grains I mean not grains excuse me when feeding greens it's really important that you start slow introducing them to greens um, especially when they're babies because their digestive system is much more sensitive once they're adults they can pretty much take anything um, and then you just introduce the greens slowly and you can feed them a lot as you can see this is actually being filmed on top of one of my rabbit tractors where the grow outs go around the yard and eat grass and that reduces my feed bill by about 80 percent and the rabbits are happier now they take about maybe a week longer to reach the weight I want but again that's more than made up for with the less feed they're eating and the quality of life that they have which is really important to me so now that's sort of the outline of what a good diet looks like I'm gonna go into the nuances of each in the coming videos that I'll link to but um, with that being said if you find yourself in a shit hits a fan kind of situation end of the world or I'm being exaggerating really just you can't afford commercial pellets um, or you don't have access to it that doesn't mean that rabbits are no good. As a matter of fact, they can easily survive off of much, much worse than what I'm showing here. You know, um, my, my girlfriend's great-grandmother was a Greek immigrant, and they raised meat rabbits in basically tiny little sheds, and they fed them literally kitchen scraps. Now, is that ideal for the rabbits? No. Um, it's, not, it's not necessarily the highest quality diet. You're not going to get the most meat, and you're not going to get the happiest rabbit, but it'll keep them alive, and it will give you a source of meat. So while I would recommend that when you have the resources available, you feed your rabbit as best as you can, you should know that rabbits still make a great choice as a, a preparedness option because if you don't have access to these higher quality foods, they can survive off of very little. Now with that being said, I should mention really quick a couple things you cannot feed a rabbit. First off, do not feed them any obviously well-known poisonous plants. That's milkweed, you know, poison ivy, stuff like that should not be fed to rabbits. For a complete list, you can easily Google it. There's a lot of veterinarians on the internet that have a complete list of what you can and can't feed. Now, with that being said, you may hear some things about alfalfa. Alfalfa is okay to feed. I will discuss that in the next video. Um, another thing you'll hear often is you shouldn't feed bread or food scraps that are very high in energy, very processed, and that's mostly true. I, I wouldn't do it under anything but the most desperate circumstances. Again, if you don't have access to any food for some reason, there's a natural disaster, or I don't know, some government collapses, obviously exaggerating, but then it's okay to feed them whatever you have because it's a survival situation. And they will survive, they just won't thrive, and you'll have higher mortality, etc., etc. But stay away from anything that's obviously poisonous. Quick search on the internet will tell you that. Stay away from most fruits. That's not a good idea for rabbits, with the notable exception of apples. Apples can actually be really good to rabbits if you feed them in moderation. Now again, vets are going to tell you no sugary foods whatsoever, but if you're in an area where you have a lot of apples, you have a small farm, you have some apple trees, some falls from the tree that are kind of low quality, you can cut off the nasty parts, give it to the at rabbits. Even better, if you're making applesauce, rabbits love apple peels. Um, so most fruits should be avoided. Apples can be fed in moderation. They should never make up more than 10% of the diet, and that's even kind of high. Um, but that being said, it's a good treat. Um, and I will get into all the other things besides your basic spread you have here in another video. So just to recap, though, a good diet is going to be based on commercial pellets when you have them. You're not going to free feed commercial pellets except to does that are lactating and have babies or babies that you're trying to get to a certain age. After that, once they're adults and they're mature, you can usually get away with about a tuna fish can worth of pellets, although it depends on the feed you're feeding and um, it depends on the weather, which is something I forgot to mention actually. Higher quality feed that's 18% protein is going to have more energy so you can feed less of it. In the winter, you're going to need to feed more because the rabbit is going to be using a lot more energy to produce body heat. In the summer, you can feed a little less. Generally, use the rabbit as your guide. If they're tearing down the feeder trying to get at your food, you're not feeding them enough. Similarly, if you come back the next day after feeding time and you notice there's food still in the tray, cut back a little bit. But um, that should be the gist of it for feeding rabbits. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. It goes without saying that they should have access to clean, fresh water all times, even in the winter. That means you might have to go out and bang out the ice crocs, but um, that's pretty common sense, I think, for most people who have been involved with animals. Uh, so the next video I'm going to do is talking about the different types of hay, and the last video I'm going to do is talking about different types of roughage. 
Uh, so stay tuned guys, I'll be linking to it below. And if you like these videos, please like, comment, subscribe, and share with me anything you'd like answered or anything you'd like me to go into in more detail. So until next time guys, thanks a lot.